two computer experts, WizKid computer people, Andrew and Philip Oliver. Now, as you can tell, they're twins. You're... Andrew Oliver. And Philip. And that means that you must be Philip, 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 Philip. <sighs> the Oliver twins. The Oliver twins have dragged me through this nostalgia trip with a thorn in my side. First, there was the original Dizzy. A game full of pitfalls and traps that would see progress destroyed. I forgave them. Then there was Treasure Island Dizzy. A game which only gave you one life. A game which made you hunt for 30 coins. I forgave them. Now I'm here. Here again at the house of Dizzy. Here again to make my peace with the men they call the Oliver Twins. I pray to Zax that I survive this day. Aha, the classic sound of the Oliver Twins there and their demonic synthesized voice. So, Fantasy World Dizzy, a game which I could rightly point to as being one of my all-time favourite games on the spectrum. A game which I haven't touched in somewhere between 25 and 30 years. Where do we begin? Let's do what Shakespeare would have done. Let's start at the beginning. Fantasy World Dizzy begins where Treasure Island Dizzy didn't end. Treasure Island Dizzy ended with a text box that told us to piss off because the game had finished. Fantasy World Dizzy starts with Dizzy in a jail cell. So, let's look at the cassette inlay for the details. Dizzy and his soon-to-be-introduced, creepily similar-looking girlfriend, Dizzy, are taking a walk through the Enchanted Forest when they were captured by the Evil King's troll. Dizzy was sent to Wizard Weird's tallest tower. For some reason, there are multiple evil wizards in Dizzy's world, which may explain why everyone is an egg. Dizzy was thrown into, and I quote, the deepest, darkest, dankest of the king's dungeon. I mean, this is only technically true because the king only seems to have one dungeon, but fair play. Dizzy then remembers he has a fresh green apple, and apparently this cheers him up. This could well explain the shit-eating grin he constantly has on his face, even when faced with certain death and imprisonment. Anyway, that's where our tale begins, and we start out with some simple puzzle work. Note the operative term of simple there. Long gone are the days where the Oliver Twins asked you to combine a random pickup with a random piece of scenery. Fantasy World Dizzy is a Sunday morning Sudoku to the original Dizzy's cryptic crossword. Give the apple to the troll and he'll give you a hint. That hint, in all fairness, consists of water is good for putting out fires, but you know, it's a hint. Dizzy's daring escape is followed by an exploration through the castle where multiple pathways must be explored, multiple items must be collected, and multiple dead ends must be stored in your mind for later reference. One of the biggest changes here in comparison to Dizzy's previous outing is the vast improvement on in-game conversations. In this game we have the whole Dizzy entourage to deal with. They don't particularly do much other than utter a few words and drop an item, but their inclusion gives the game a character and charm that isn't found in the original and it doesn't turn up in the second game until the latter quarter of the adventure. There's a great sense of compromise to Fantasy World Dizzy, a sense that the Oliver Twins had learned a thing or two from Dizzy's previous adventures. Gone is the dumb way to inventory system from Treasure Island, instead, here, we have a menu system that pauses the game on use and lets you select exactly what you want to use or drop. Fantastic. While Dizzy initially starts with the same carrying space of three items, he actually picks up an upgrade later in the adventure, and this allows him to carry more. This alleviates the necessity to walk backwards and forwards across the landscape, which is something that plagues the original game to no end. Dizzy also, mercifully, has more than one life this time around, although there's no extra lives to be found in the game itself. The difficulty level has been toned down to a fair degree since his first adventure, although the lack of extra lives certainly puts the shits up you if you're trying to do something for the first time. You've got a sleeping potion in your hand, and you think you need to use it on that fire-breathing dragon? But do you want to risk losing one of your three lives to try it out? This kind of scenario often leads to you searching around and around following all of the red herrings until you finally bite the bullet and just go and do what you originally thought. Thankfully, as previously mentioned, the puzzles here are far less obtuse than they were previously, although the Oliver Twins do still like to throw a red herring or two into the mix. 
A bottle of whiskey that once picked up can't be dropped without drinking it, leading to Dizzy farting around like an idiot and ignoring your controls for a bit. A hull, a literal hull, that when picked up will make you drop all your stuff. These red herrings are often much more obvious than Fantasy World's previous counterparts. In both of the previous games, you would have just items that do nothing. There was no indication they did nothing, they just did nothing. You could carry them all over the land, wondering what the hell the point was, but they were ultimately a waste of time. In this game, the red herrings are there to play a little trick on you. To give a wink and a nod and says, Ha ha! Got ya! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Ha yeah, Oliver Twins, you fucking got me alright. That's right. I may have heaped praise on the improvements for this game so far, but that does not stop it from containing some patented Oliver Twins bullshit. Including, but not limited to, jumps that require meticulous precision. Things that kill you with no recourse. This fucking shite hawk. And everything that happens in the last fifth of this game. Let's go into detail on that. After travelling through a well to Australia and swapping a small cow for a magic bean, y yes, this happens, you're pretty much on your way to victory. All you have to do is plant the magic bean, use some water to help it grow, and then climb your way up into the clouds. Here's where my patience started to run thin with the Oliver Twins' incessant need to yank me in the wrong direction. For an age, I could not work out where I was supposed to go here, I climbed the beanstalk and was stuck on this cloud platform. I couldn't move left without falling off, there was nowhere to jump to the right, but when I did, there was clearly a platform there blocking my path. What the hell was I doing wrong? Turns out, I jumped to the wrong side. I had to jump directly up, which landed me on a different part of the cloud, of course. This continues throughout all of these damn cloud screens. I cannot describe the levels of frustration when trying to figure my way out through this labyrinth of are they, aren't they platforms. There are seemingly no rules here. The Oliver Twins have created a maze of platforms where some of them are platforms and some of them are backdrops. It's not like getting dizzy to jump from one platform to another is easy anyway. He rolls around like he's having a fit at the best of times. So making these false platforms just to grease my anger is tantamount to treason in my eyes I don't know maybe not treason I'm just sick of this fantasy world dizzy gets so close to getting everything right that this sort of arse ache really starts to drag what I will say is that the cloud kingdom is reasonably short for what it's worth and it leads you to the final stages of the game it leads you to dizzy your gross egg wife once rescued, you're treated to this beautiful heart scene which, honestly, simple though it is, makes me so happy to see something that isn't just another wall of text and... Oh no. Oliver Twins. What have you done? See, enough of this shit will make you invincible. Able to conquer the world? Eviscerate your enemies. And I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this. That's right, folks. We're back here again for another round of Oh, so you thought you'd finished, but no. Remember the coins in Treasure Island, Dizzy? Remember how the Oliver Twins had seemingly held back on their obtuse cannons and then fired them all at once when it came to finding the hidden treasure? Remember how it couldn't get any worse? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a land where obtuseness is taken to another fucking level. You want coins hidden behind bullshit things all over again? Oh, the Oliver Twins have you there. Don't you worry about that. But you're addicted now. You want more. You want to see how far the obtuseness can really go. I could complain about multiple elements of this coin hunt, but I'm going to break this single one down into its varying stages, because this... Ladies and gentlemen, is the pinnacle of devilry. Firstly, I don't consider this a spoiler. A spoiler would mean I was revealing something pivotal that you would come across naturally yourself if you played the game. You will never, never find this without the luck of the gods on your side. 
So this isn't a spoiler. This is just a solution to your future anger. See this pile of boxes? See how there's no indication that a secret pathway exists within its recesses? Walking over these crates, jumping around on these crates, doing anything on these crates appears to do nothing out of the ordinary. But there is a secret passageway. So how do we access it? First, we have to place Dizzy on the far left pixel of this particular crate, then jump to the left. On doing so, we fall between the gap in two crates and land in the secret maze below. There is no indication that you have to do this. None. No cryptic hints or messages. As a kid, I only knew this existed because of the typical schoolyard communication. Rumours of secrets and pokes would circle the grounds, and one kid reckoned that this was possible. I had to see it with my own eyes before I even believed it. One thing we didn't know how to do, though, was how to exit the secret maze. This is where my time with Fantasy World Dizzy often came to an end, because I just could not work out how to leave this horrible mess. It turns out the Oliver Twins pulled the same trick twice. There's a particular place you have to stand in order to jump through a platform that you'll otherwise just walk over. The difference here is that you're presented with a wall of yellow bricks. You do not know which are solid and which are passable. There is practically no way for you to find your way out of this hellhole without blind luck. <sighs> this is something that you learn to live with in Dizzy Games. The core of Fantasy World has been improved immensely, and this still stands tall as probably my favourite Dizzy game of the lot. But if you ever ever think you're going to complete a dizzy game on a blind run, you have a world of disappointment ahead of you. To be fair, this only really matters if you're a completionist. The ending to dizzy, whether you collect the 30 coins or not, is so bare bones that it's barely worth the challenge to find them all. A bit of dialogue, a repetition of the heart scene, and then you're booted back to the title screen. So the Oliver Twins. The Oliver Twins, once again, have given me a great adventure and sent me off with a backpack packed with frustration. It's still a journey well worth taking, but I'd advise most heavily on taking a few shortcuts along the way.